and welcome to the Memory Lane 80 show on Spotlight TV. I'm Hayley Palmer and I'm so excited. Uh, we have got a very special guest today. It's singer, songwriter and actress, OBE, Patty Boule. <laughs> Thanks, Hayley. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yes, yeah, it's such... lovely. It's lovely to be talking to you today. You too. Honestly, you have no idea how excited we are to have you here. Um, as you know, this is the 80s show and we absolutely just love your music. So you're in the right Thank place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hayley. Brilliant. So what have you been up to at the moment? Well, I'm touring. I've, actually, I've got a show called Aretha and Me, yes. which I wrote. Yeah. And what I'm doing is drawing comparisons between the great Aretha Franklin's life and career and my life and career. So it's quite hysterical, actually, Love <laughs> because, that. you know, I mean, she, she's the greatest singer of our time. So what I've done is taken stories from my childhood, right? stories from her childhood and just drawn comparisons of how, you know, different. We're, we're both in show business. Yes. But my career, my background is totally different from hers. Absolutely opposite. Yeah. So, you know, like, for instance, my, her siblings were all professional musicians and they toured together. Whereas in my household, we had, it was absolutely, couldn't be further away from, really? <laughs> from the nine, industry. Really? Nine brothers and sisters, is that right? Well, there was nine of us all nine, together. Yes. I was the seventh of nine. Wow. And um, everyone else, you know, industrial chemist, um, a pilot, uh, doctor in the U.S. military, um, oh my God, physicist, uh, my mother just, I mean, incredible. And me, <laughs> the scapegoat. So where do you get the talent the from? Because, I mean, I can't sing family. and my, my parents can't sing, no okay, okay. When you it comes must to be your singing, talent. No, yeah. no, when it comes to singing, in Africa, we sing about everything. <laughs> okay? Death, we sing. Birth, we sing. Happy, you sing. Sad, you sing. We sing about sing. everything. So, you know, to me, coming into show business was an accident, really. Wow. Because um, I was just turning 16, finished school. My parents decided that um, I should become a lawyer. Dad decided I should become a lawyer because everybody else was doing yeah. science subjects and I did art subjects. And uh, I decided I was going to go into the convent. So I became a nun God. and, well, a novitiate. And it was just before I took my, my vows, somehow, I don't know how it got out that I was there only because I was trying to get away from my father's choice. Right. And so Mother Superior said to my parents, send her abroad somewhere, wherever, for three months and let her decide what she really wants to do. And uh, so they sent me to England because I had a sister studying here. Wow. And I was just walking past St. Giles Circus in the West End, you know, Shaftesbury Theatre. Yes. Well, it had a big head of hair, rainbow coloured head. And Madame Tussauds those days had this lady's head with rainbow coloured hair. One was kind of straight, the other was Afro, but it didn't matter to me. I just come from Africa. I didn't know there was any difference. So I just saw this rainbow coloured hair and I thought, Madame Tussauds. There was a long queue. <laughs> so I joined the queue. Two hours later, I was at the stage door. God. And I said to the man, how much is it to get in? So he said, this is an audition. And I said, yeah, well, how much is it to get in? Because, <laughs> you know, it didn't. Yeah. Was... So he said, you don't pay, you sing. And I thought, that's cheap. I'm, <laughs> I am falling in love with this country. <laughs> and all I have to do is just go in there and sing. You know, to me, sing, yeah, I can sing. You know, it didn't occur to me that you, some people got trained for singing. Yeah. That never. So anyway, as it happened, we were let in three at a time. And I hear you got full marks. Oh, no, no, that was, a, that was years later. Oh, was it? This was <laughs> another show. Oh, okay. Because I got in there and I sang. It was a show called Hair. Yes. It was before you were born. Oh, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> And, and, you know, I, I just got on stage and sang The Sound of Music because I saw it so many times in the convent. And, you know, the hills are alive with the sound of music. I wish I could join in. And, <laughs> and uh, I got the job because they were looking for a soprano. Can you believe? God. Apparently they auditioned for two weeks. Well, Paul Nicholas was the director. Oh, wow. He said thousands of people, they just, no soprano would come 
an audition in, in the show and everybody else was singing songs from the show, which, yeah, I just thought, gosh, they don't know any other songs in this country. They're singing, God. let the sun shine, let the sun shine. <laughs> I, you know, oh, when the moon is in oh. the seventh house. That's what they were doing. So, wow. yeah, I hit the highest note and got the job. Just incredible. Well, That's, we want to yeah, find out more yeah. about this. And we're going to play out one of your songs now uh, okay. from 1981. Yeah, I was born. Uh, it's called <laughs> Here's My Guy. Uh, should we take a little look at this? Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm still here with beautiful Patty Bile. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm good. She's good. good. We're, just, <laughs> we're just chilling, having a good old chat. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, we want to know more because I believe that in uh, 1978 that you won a talent show called New Faces. Oh, gosh, yes. See, that was another story. Yeah. I, um... It was a sad story because I lost my brother in a plane crash. God. And um, this is just before the program. As a matter of fact, I avoided going on that program. <laughs> I really tried to avoid going. My agent put me forward for the audition. I had just changed my name from Patricia Ngozi Ibigwe, which no one could pronounce because I just finished a plane lead in the West End. Yeah. And there was a record out with it, The Moon and I. And the DJ couldn't pronounce my name. In those days, they really didn't try. But so I thought, OK, I'll change my name to Patty Boulay, which I right. stole from an old actress called Evelyn Lay. I love it, though. Home. It's got a great ring to it. I know. My husband had a meeting with her, came back, was talking about Boulay. He absolutely adored this elderly woman. She was, you know, quite elderly at the time. And I thought Boulay sounds like a good name. And so I, I pinched her name. But anyway. On the day of the audition, I t purposely turned up in Birmingham. It was ATV then. I turned up late, very late, literally three hours late. Oh, wow. Because I thought, at least he knows I've been in Birmingham. I'll show him the ticket. And then when I got there, there was a strike. Oh. <laughs> and they hadn't started the audition. No. Seriously. I was the last person to register, the last person <laughs> to be on New Faces, and it turned out to be the last series as well, last yeah. episode, yeah. So um, I went in there and sang a song by a country and western singer called Jim Weatherly. Um, I picked a ballad because the reason I actually even turned up was because my, my brother had died in a crash, and it took, in those days, you had to book two or three weeks in advance. Yeah on air flight, you know, flights. And um, so I had to wait. And my husband persuaded, my fiance, boyfriend at the time, persuaded me to go on the show. Because he said, at least it would take your mind off or yeah. twice, you know. So I picked this ballad, and I really seriously don't remember the first show. It's ridiculous. God. Every time I look at it, because emotionally, I was completely just gone. Yeah, yeah. Just gone. And, I, and it was an emotional song, thank God. So I think everything went into it, if you see what I mean. Yeah. And, um, and I ended up with maximum marks. Yes, 120 and, points. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't like, you know, X Factor or something where you could see the judges. The judges were so far away. And half the time I couldn't hear what they were saying and I wasn't interested in what they were saying. They could have said I was crap and I wouldn't have bothered, wouldn't have bothered me. Just to clarify, they didn't, <laughs> but, you know. But they gave me full marks. Wow. You know, so, yeah. Wow, and that really launched your career. It did. It is uh, incredible. It was, yeah, God works in mysterious ways. Mm. But, you know, I went to my brother's funeral. When I came back, they had aired the program, and it took the country by storm. I, it was at the airport. It was quite funny because there was all these photographers taking pictures, and I thought maybe Mick Jagger or someone was behind me because <laughs> I didn't know it was there for me. I'm thinking... <laughs> You know, I'm thinking, what is, what, uh, you know, Patty, Patty, I'm thinking they're trying to get me out of the way. God. And it was amazing. Yeah. And, and I came and it was, Just there you fabulous. go. Yeah. Uh, bring back the memories. Oh, tell me about it. You know, that <laughs> song, I, I really, every time I hear it, I kind of cringe at the end because I was giggling, you know, because the description of my man, you know, and I'm thinking, I, actually, if you listen to my voice, I was really laughing through 
the whole thing. It was so much fun. And then in the end, I just broke into a giggle because I just thought, if that's my man, I don't want him, thank you. <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was fun to do. It was, oh, yeah. fantastic. Well, I want to talk a bit about your musical theatre career because, I mean, it's just been incredible. Um, obviously, you know, Hair the Musical. Um, you then went into the title role of Carmen Jones. And oh, you yeah. um, played Carmen on the world tour for three years. I know. Wow. I mean, I, <laughs> I'd, I'd done Jesus Christ Superstar, yeah. Two Gentlemen of Verona, Pear, Follow the Star. I did a few shows in the West End, and then the, yeah. the Black Mikado. That was my first leading role, which I played Yum Yum. And um, <laughs> yes, and then, of course, years later, I had children, and I decided that's it, I'm going to spend some time at home with my children. Coming back into show business, I bumped into Gary Wilmot, who said he was singing, he was playing the part of Joe in Carmen Jones. And I said, but you're not an opera singer. I said, yeah, but, so I thought, this is amazing, I'll go and see him. And yeah. I went to see him and I thought, Carmen, I need to play that part. I like that, that's mine. I, need to play that part <laughs> so i went away and i tried to learn to sing carmen but i didn't you know everybody absolutely and and so i thought who would teach me i went to different teachers and everybody says okay put one leg in front and i'm going i'm playing carmen not mimi or something Anyway, in the end, I found a teacher who would let me leap up and down the stool or chair singing this. And yeah, wow. I did about six months training. Then I went yeah. and applied to, to audition. Wow. And I got the role. Of and, course. Uh, loved it. Yeah. Best role, female role. You know, she's my utter ego. You know what I mean? She's everything I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I just loved her to death. Ah, she's, she's made for you. Oh, made for me. Carmen, yeah, Carmen was made for me. You know, I played her like the African women that I've seen, like market women. Yeah. Because you don't get a description of her character. Mm. It's only, there's a line which Hammerstein put in which says, you walk in here like an old river, rolling your hips like an old riverboat. And I thought, that's the only description you have of Carmen, you know? So I thought, okay, just make up a thing for her. I decided she was an only child, spoiled, just knew how to wrap her father around her little finger. And that was really that was, her yeah. making of her and her downfall. And that's how I played her, just, you know, couldn't care less. Like most of, I grew, grew up in Africa. Mm. You know, most of the women in the market, you, you want comments, you go to the African market. Love that. Amazing. Well, we don't actually have a clip of you, unfortunately, singing uh, from no, Carmen, but we do sad. have a clip for you uh, singing Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Um, it's just incredible. Check this out. I'm here with Patty Boulay, and she's just a ray of sunshine in my life, honestly. <laughs> just brilliant, lighting up the studio. Uh, now, I want to talk to you about some of your TV appearances. Uh -huh. um, celebrity MasterChef. Oh, don't. Give us the lay down on Do that. Do you know, I was writing, because this was me coming back into singing again, and I was writing, the only thing anybody ever offers you these days, well, have offered for many years, is I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Would you do that? No. Oh. It's been seven times I've been out, I never. I didn't join this industry to, no, I joined this industry t to provide escapism. Right. Okay? I didn't join it to, to bring people down, and people's virtues and things down, or even knock people on camera. No. So, anyway, Celebrity MasterChef. I'd written my, my show, Billy and Me, about Billy Holiday, because now I'm doing Aretha and Me. It was yeah. literally the same thing. And... I get a call from my agent. Somebody had dropped out of Celebrity MasterChef. I had never watched it. Okay, I'm African. Come on, food is not something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they call me and say, would you do it? And I said, oh, I'm launching my show on the same day in London. I've got rehearsals. They said, we'll get you there. We'll get you there fast. We promise, you know. And I'm thinking, what's going on? Because somebody had dropped out. So muggings here. Uh, just a scapegoat. Yeah. So they needed five people so they can drop one. Right. Okay. So I'm thinking, how difficult is it to slap a curry on the plate? <laughs> <laughs> curry and rice. How can you go yeah, wrong? I can go wrong. Okay. 
So uh, definitely go wrong. <laughs> so my, my children are going, Mommy, not quite like that. I think maybe you should watch this program. So <gasps> I did a few oh. episodes and I thought, what have I done? Yeah. So anyway, on the day, they rushed me back. I, I, I had musicians I've never played with before. I have two hours show to do and I had 15 minutes rehearsal with them. I ended up in the wow. hospital. Ended up in, yeah, I ended up in the hospital for 16 hours. I had my book launch the next day. Nice. I left from the hospital to my book launch. Two days that were just totally gone. Because I, I, seriously, I was just on autopilot. Oh. So that to me was Celebrity Master Chef. And when they said, you know, it was quite funny. When they said, um, so the person we're going to let go. Because I realized everybody else had books of things they had practiced. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, wouldn't have I had that no far. idea. Yeah, so same. I'm thinking, oh, never mind. It's television, for goodness sakes, people. Yeah. It's not like you're dying and going to heaven and this is judgment day. So, you know, I... Anyway, the job you guys are doing here in this studio is wonderful because you affect people positively. You Absolutely. Don't want to, we've got mental health problems. We've got, yeah. we've got depression. You don't really want to. No, we're know. playing the Saturday night tunes. Precisely. And, you know, I mean, I lecture at Middlesex University. Yes. I, I'm a visiting teaching fellow. And that's what I do, just prepare young people for the future. I'm not politically correct by no means. I tell them what their mama probably told them and they weren't listening. We like that. We I like just the go in there and the tell room. them. Yeah, because I say to them, if I don't tell you the truth, you're going to go out there thinking that life is something it's not. It's true. You know, I'm learning so a lot I from do. Patty today. I'm having like live yeah. chats. It's brilliant. <laughs> so good. Oh, we're going to play out a song of yours uh, from 1983. It's the first time I ever saw your face. Um, and I just love it. And we're going to have a little look at it. Here we go. Now, talk to me a little bit more about your tour, um, Aretha and Me. Now, yeah. I know it's going to my hometown, actually, uh, of Portsmouth. Oh, yes. brilliant. At uh, New Theatre Royal on 25th That's September. That's right. And you Southampton. Know, I played Carmen. At the, it was oh, part you? of our UK tour. Oh, ah. Yes. And, um, well, actually, oh, I don't know. Aretha and Me, I sort of, because I was doing... Billy and me, and I thought, what am I going to follow this show with? And I thought, Aretha Franklin, you know. Say Billy, a little prayer. Absolutely. Everyone. Billy can be quite dark, but yeah. I found a lot of humor mm. with Billy Holiday's story and comparing my life. And I thought, I, I don't know what similarities I have with Aretha, but I'm going to try and find it. And I did. I found some. And then I, I thought, my goodness, she's recorded over 300 songs. So where do you start? So I went on Facebook and said, Send me your favorite Aretha Franklin songs. Okay? Oh. So I, yeah, you know, cheating. Ness and Dorma. Yes. So I said, Ness and Dorma? Like, what's wrong with these people? What part of Pavarotti became Aretha Franklin? So, <laughs> so, um, so I Googled and I went, oh, I'm so screwed in this. <laughs> I have to sing Ness and Dorma. And, it, you know, it became quite nice really I, yeah. I love doing it now but it was a tough one to learn and then I do Bessie Smith oh. and I but I do Bessie Smith I do dirty jazz right okay because she has one called kitchen man so you can imagine what's that about <laughs> sometimes you know the audience you can feel when the audience go she's not talking about food <laughs> and they start giggling and laughing you know and then of course there's Alberta Hunter who um, was a comedian, same time as Bessie Smith, and she wrote a song called Rough and Ready Man when she was 84 about the kind of man she was looking for. I thought, this is a woman after my own heart. Yes. You know, write and, it down. But I get people to come on stage and dance as well. Oh, and do tell, you? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so I there. love that because it's about, it's about the audience. It's not really about me. I'm just there to entertain. That's what the industry is about. Yes. So it's just to get them to have fun and, and then... I do a bit of Carmen, oh. and I vamp the men in the audience. Oh, really? Oh, the audience love that. I think it's their favorite thing. You, you have, it's, it's so funny because you get the wives going. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come vamp my husband. <laughs> you avoid those ones. Because oh, I'm yeah. thinking, I don't know what I'm going to get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, it's really lovely because they, you know, it's every now and then you see one that kind of gets very jealous 
Because you know the men really feel. I even found the uh, Bishop Carey. <gasps> I know. I didn't know it was a bishop. It was in Mufti. <laughs> so I thought, excommunication. <laughs> and, uh, but when I, I said, I am so sorry. I didn't know. He said, don't be silly. You made me the proudest man in the room. <laughs> Aww. Wow. Thought, the cloth is not the same as it used to be. <laughs> Wow, we need to come and see the show. Oh, no, it's, it's, it really is great fun. I Definitely. Mean, we'll I try and get uh, the link fun. on the, the screen right now, actually. Yeah, it's on so, my tour. So it's all this year, country. isn't it? Around it's the country. All this year, yes. With us. It's about 35 gigs, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, yes. Well, details are on the screen uh, below. Check it out. Meanwhile, we're going to take a look uh, from 1986. Yes. Uh, it's called On My Own. On My Own. Yes. So, here we go. Check it out. Hang on. Did you say on my own? On my own, yeah. Now that's Patty LaBelle. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> I love it! This is show business. Patty, that was so funny. Well, I tell you what, darling, you know what? It's a good thing you didn't mistake me for Dolly Parton. Now, <laughs> that would be the end. This that is true. would be the, the end of a career. Absolutely. Be but at least Patty LaBelle is black. <laughs> And the name sounds similar. So, no problem. Hey. Listen, we've moved on. We've moved on. We're just going to have, like, tea and cake and a bit of a lie down just to make up for some it. Some food. Absolutely. I need food. Uh, right, we have got some questions, uh, Patty, from some of our uh, viewers. Um, Jan would like to know, what do you wish you'd know at the start of your career that you know now? I tell you what, um, nothing. Oh, because it's the same question somebody asked me said don't you remember being 16 i said no i was always this age i think i don't wish i knew anything because i learned from all the mistakes yeah, and coming true. in in total innocence and learning from there so if i had known anything i would have taken a different direction right so i'm glad i was just just let the universe guide me and that's what it did so, yeah yeah that's true. Okay, love that. Um, and uh, Jeannie said, what's been the highlight of your career? Oh, I am so blessed. I have so many. The Queen's Golden Jubilee. I organised and led 5,000 gospel singers from heaven knows where. I organised them and led them down the, the, up the mall. Um, oh, gosh, there's so many. Meeting Princess Diana, having lunch oh. with Princess Diana, meeting her so many times, meeting Prince Harry. Absolutely wonderful. He's so much like his mother. Mother. Um, oh, I have so many singing for King Hussein of Jordan. Um, in Jordan, birthday celebration. Um, oh, no, believe me, I could have. I could be here. The oh, list nice. is endless. Just like, incredible. I have been winning new faces. Yeah. I've just been blessed. I yes. mean, life is just kind of just given me one special moment after another. It's it's just. Yeah, I'm blessed. Just brilliant, just brilliant. And here she is now on this show yeah. with me. <laughs> no point, no. <laughs> no, high point. Yeah. Um, and Dean says, uh, what advice would you give um, to uh, you know, a budding singer that wants to make it into the industry? Whoa, now that's a tough question. Because I think you have to be kind to people you meet on the way up because you meet the same it's people true. on the way down. Absolutely, yeah. You know, um, you have to be nice to everyone because this is, this is an industry that deals with the spirit. People forget that. That's why they say there's no business like show business. You're dealing with people's hearts. You're dealing with people's spirits. You yeah. Know, you, you have a moment in their life and you better make it good. Yeah. Because if I you're like not that. making it good, mm. you are taking a space that you shouldn't occupy. Yeah. I think a lot of people miss that because you're here to serve. Yeah. When I say to people I'm a public servant, they go, how dare you, I'm no public servant. I said, well, fool yourself. Because that's what you do, you give public service. Because that's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, you give public, that's what I do. I give public service. So children should, and young people should remember that. Ego is for fools. Ego is for fools. Only people who don't know <laughs> have yeah. ego. Yeah. You know, I've always, even from childhood, I've always known that. If I see someone with an ego, I know they've still got a long way to go. Yeah, They're still sucking true. on their mother's breast, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't come into the real life. So yeah. ego is, is, has no, no place. Yeah. You know, yes, you need the comfort 
to, you know, you need the camera to be working so that you can do your job. You need the lights to make you good. Yes, you need all those things. But apart from that, your heart has to be good and pure. Yeah. For the public, really. Absolutely. Love that. I love the Patsy advice. We could have a whole show on this. <laughs> Keep the questions coming. <laughs> and then we're going to play Stop It, I Like It. Uh -huh. Tune. Check this out. <laughs> Aww, we've now come to the end of the Memory Lane 80 show. Can I just say what an amazing guest uh, we have had on today, Patty Boulay. Just thank you so much for all your guidance and oh, just talking you. us through <laughs> yeah. everything. Honestly, I've learned so much. It's just been brilliant. Thank you, you're so lovely. Oh, no, honestly, it's been an absolute <laughs> honour. Thank you so much. Thank and we you. hope My you've pleasure. enjoyed the show. Uh, please do get in contact. Details are on the screen below. And uh, remember, you can follow me on Instagram at Hayley Palmer underscore, underscore presenter uh, and at presenter Hayley on Twitter. Social media handles? Are you into social media? Yeah, yeah oh yes, I'm in yeah. Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Everywhere. Brilliant. We'll put some links up uh, for all of that. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Hayley Palmer. This is the beautiful and amazing Pate Boulay. Thank, thank you, you so much. Hayley. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.